Welcome, everyone, to Healing Wednesdays, the Circle of Twelve. I'm Lee Carroll. And I'm Monica Marani. Happy December 6th. This is the month we celebrate the holidays. I love, love this time of year. Tonight's program is offered for free and available from cryingmasters.com as well as my YouTube channel. The first Wednesday of every month is always offered for free. However, our Healing Wednesday members receive a 90-minute program, just like this one, every single Wednesday of the year as part of their paid membership. So, if you enjoy our free programs, you might want to consider a membership, especially as our members receive so many benefits, including something brand new. Yes, that's right, Lee. It's a special additional program. We're calling it the Green Mist, and it's for members only. The Green Mist. I love it. And we've been getting feedback. Many of you love it as well. It's where you participate in a guided meditation from Lee and I. It's a journey where you meet seven profound healers within very special, powerful healing energies. The Green Mist Meditations, we present them on the first Sunday of every month. And of course, the members can access the replays within their membership portal. The creation of these new programs is our way of thanking our membership. After all, our members have helped make this free program possible. If you're interested in becoming a member, I hope you are. And if you'd like to know more, come join our circle at grindmasters.com. So for a few months now, we have begun our evenings with an affirmation. I really love affirmations and I truly believe in using them as a tool to help create our reality. So the affirmations that Lee and I share, they're inspired by Cryon and for decades, Cryon has told us we are magnificent and that we should expect a benevolent future. So let's claim our magnificence. Let's claim our eternal connection to the God within. You're going to see the affirmation words on your screen and we say them three times so that it really solidifies the affirmation. Are you ready? Okay, let's take a moment to focus. We're going to connect with the cells of our body. Here we go. Right now, in this moment, I am speaking to the God within. I invite a deeper connection with that sacred part of me that exists forever as an eternal divine spark. I allow myself to be a conduit for the pure love of God to flow through me. I willingly receive God's love. I willingly receive the love from my guides and angels. I willingly receive the love from my soul family. I reflect this love to others. I invite love to always illuminate my path. Right now, in this moment, I'm speaking to the God within. I invite a deeper connection with that sacred part of me that exists forever as an eternal divine spark. I allow myself to be a conduit for the pure love of God to flow through me. I willingly receive God's love. I willingly receive the love from my guides and angels. I willingly receive the love from my soul family. I reflect this love to others. I invite love to always illuminate my path. Right now, in this moment, I am speaking to the God within. I invite a deeper connection with that sacred part of me that exists forever as an eternal divine spark. I allow myself to be a conduit for the pure love of God to flow through me. I willingly receive God's love. I willingly receive the love from my guides and angels. I willingly receive the love from my soul family. I reflect this love to others. I invite love 
to always illuminate my path. I hope all of you feel the truth of these statements. I do. You are sacred and blessed. We will be saying these same affirmations again for our membership for the rest of the month. And for our members, they'll find all these past affirmations that we've been given these past months and these as well in their membership portal. So what we'd like to do now is questions that have been submitted to us. And this first question comes from Paul. Paul is in Pennsylvania in the US and he's saying, I am so confused about the law of attraction, which states that what we give our attention to is vibrationally drawn to us. However, Cryon states that we can heal our body and void things that are inappropriate by talking to our cells and giving them instructions on what we want done. How do I accomplish this without focusing on what is wrong in my body, particularly when the issue creates discomfort? Can Cryon help me understand how to use my consciousness to heal without attracting more of the condition to me because now I am focused on it. Please help me resolve this confusion. Hi, Paul. I'd love to. In answer to your question, I'd, I want to clarify what Crying has actually asked us to do when talking to ourselves, and I think that that's going to clear it up. Let me paint a picture for you. Let's say that you have some pain in your shoulder. The pain is there by itself. You didn't concentrate on anything to create it. It just hurts. So we start with a blank slate. What energy are you going to concentrate on when you talk to your cells? Listen, it's going to be a pain-free shoulder. That's the energy, not the pain in your shoulder. Here is Crian's advice on how to talk to your cells. Quote, I love you cells. I see a pain-free shoulder and a great healing there. Cells, create this peace for me. Dear innate, I am in charge of all things chemical, and I create a pain-free shoulder. Unquote. Those were the instructions from crying for your pain for your shoulder. <laughs> now, where in all of this do you see any concentration or focus on the pain? You don't. Instead, there is a concentration on the lack of it and a great feeling of peace from a pain-free situation. So if you now call upon the rules and the law of attraction, and I hope you will, you'll be attracting a pain-free shoulder. Just because you address an issue that is painful does not mean you bring more pain. In this case, you're clearly focusing on the lack of pain and not the pain. Let me give you the opposite so you can see what I mean. Dear cells in my shoulder, I hurt. There's pain there. I'm miserable. I'm really just, I'm in discomfort. Take it away. I know you can do it. Take away the pain. Take it away. Now, as dysfunctional as this, this sounds to me, it makes me wince. People do this all the time. We find over and over that it's just habit that many people tend to think in negative terms first and they don't even realize it. So talking to yourselves about a pain-free situation does not follow a law of attraction which then creates more pain. <clears throat> in fact, it's just the opposite. You will attract healing the more you talk to yourselves about what a good job they're doing in that pain-free shoulder of yours. This also is the answer to creating good affirmations, which we teach. Never paint a negative picture of a situation in an attempt to create a verbal affirmation around it. The same is with prayer. How do you like this one? Dear God, my friends are going through such horror and their pain and their sorrow. Let me tell you all about it. Here's what I'm asking for. <laughs> Here's another. Instead of this one, dear God, surround my friends with the love and the light of your presence and let them feel the peace that is there for them. So in these examples, again, apply the laws of attraction for me. What are you doing in the first example compared to the second? In the first one, you're painting a horror picture for God as if God has no idea what's going on. God's in a vacuum for your friends. 
Yet people do this all the time, never thinking about the energy it creates around them, their friends, or the law of attraction. In the second example, you're concentrating on your friends being in total peace with their situation. That's what you visualize. That's what you're asking for. Paul, since the law of attraction works, I know it does, we know it does, we're always advised to state all things in positive ways. And that's exactly what we'll, uh, we'll be attracting to our lives. I love that answer, Lee. And if I may, I'd like to just also throw to you something that I picked up on when you were saying that is you were requesting for a pain-free shoulder. And I know that there will be many who are doing affirmations on a regular basis and they'll probably even say that one step better is to say I claim a healthy fully functioning shoulder Healed. instead of using mm -hmm. pain free yeah what right. what do you say it's about the that? same you can uh, we we teach that you could visualize it done yeah. Uh, well, um, if it's for me, if it's done, it's pain-free. <laughs> there might be, there, there might be some that yeah. are saying by using pain-free, you're still saying See, using the you're word still pain. using the word pain. If you're that, you reframe it to the the most benevolent thing you can think of and visualize, and that's what you state. Yeah, and I notice that often, cry and will that is the command to be pain-free. Yeah. Uh, but for some, again, it's what works for your consciousness yeah. in the best way where you can visualize what you want as opposed to what you have and you're discomfortable with. I like the, I, I like the whole question from Paul yeah. because it lets us talk about reframing our verbalizations mm -hmm. to match what we really want as opposed to the habit of going right for the negative. And, you know, we're mm. trained in those habits. Oh, so boy. <laughs> it's really about retraining yourself to get out of that habit and it's almost like projecting yourself into the future and I, claiming that know, health. The next question, it Is, talks about that. Yeah, so let, right. <laughs> let's do that question uh, quickly now. It comes from George, and George is in California in the US, and says, I love the discussion about innate and how we can learn to communicate with it in regard to healing the body. I'm wondering, is there an equivalent consciousness center that works with our emotions? If the cellular structure in our body can be directed to stave off disease, is there a similar process that can direct resistance to negative emotional energy, or is this also the role of innate? Well, here we go again. Hi, George. <laughs> I can't tell you if that is there or what it even is called, uh, where it might be. But I believe it is. I really do. And now George is asking, is there something comparable to the way our consciousness can work with our innate to heal ourselves? Uh, and, and he's asking, is there something for emotions? First and foremost, know this. Consciousness can change the chemistry in our bodies and create wonderful healing. Uh, that's the constant teaching of crying. You've heard it over and over. And it's not spooky stuff either. The placebo effect, well known in medical science, is the proof. People who believed a pill would cure them, and then it did. Later it was revealed that the pill was empty. What happened? Well, it was their pure belief that was needed. That's all that was needed to heal what they had. So, is there something like that for our emotions? Can we change the, I'll call it the resting point, for our, remote, our emotions, what's normal from always being worrisome and afraid to being peaceful and have a lack of anxiety? I know the answer is yes, since it happened to me. I changed myself from the person I used to be to a much more peaceful and positive person, mainly by practicing certain principles every day. First, I started using my own simple affirmations for my life and who I am. Then I practiced being grateful of life every morning, grateful for everything. It went like this. As I awoke, even from a stressful dream, I made myself stay in bed and tell spirit how grateful I was for the good things in my life. Then it graduated to even something bigger, to thanking spirit for all the good things that were coming my way. I firmly believe I was not then training my brain or heart to do anything different. Instead, I was 
taking away all the negative stuff that had become the habit of my culture and my life. In my youth, I saw everyone around me worry and be concerned. So, naturally, of course, I grew up doing the same thing with my life. That's habit. It's almost programming. Nobody ever told me that my normal countenance or state of mind was designed for peace and wisdom over things I could not control. Spirit designed all of us as magnificent. Worry, fear, negativity. Change our body chemistry. Ask a doctor. Our bodies were not created to worry, then create disease about that disease in our chemistry because we worried. It's not that way at all. It just makes no sense. It's just the opposite. So here's what I think. I think my practicing of gratitude and expecting good things helped me to reset the emotional switch that I was designed to have in my magnificence all along. Yours too. What is it? Where is it? I have no idea. <laughs> I'd like to think it's maybe something connected to my pineal, a window to my soul. That's just my own idea. I don't know where it is, but I know it worked. Absolutely, it works. And so let us connect with our pineal and our heart. And the brain is also engaged with that. So I invite you to close your eyes and just allow a disconnection from everything that is going on in your life right now. This is a moment we have right now to be in the stillness, in the peacefulness, in the quiet of our soul, which has a beautiful message it wants to give us that we are loved and cherished and taken care of. We simply have to relax and disengage the 3D human part and invite the divine part to step forward. And right now we invite the message of Cryon to step forward and come to us now. Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. We start a series this month, and this is the first week of that series. And we're going to call the series Revealing the Engines of the Human Being. The Engines of the Human Being. Now, this may sound similar to other things we have spoken of, but now we are reframing the idea that human beings may have some esoteric tools or some thinking or some concentrations. And instead, they become engines. Now, here's why. An engine is physical. An engine creates energy that propels you forward. Most of the time, this is the thinking of an engine in a vehicle. And so that is the vision the first time we say an engine. Now, there are certain kinds of things that human beings have naturally that are starting to be revealed, starting to be felt then starting to be used in this wonderful new energy. If you think suddenly that they are engines, you say, well, I can deal with an engine. What, what, what do we fuel it with? Ah, you fuel it with several things, intent and allowance. Do you allow your engine to wake up and be functional? And if you do, do you intend for it to work? Now, these are two different things, but they're both needed. Some will say, well, of course I intend for it to work if I gave allowance for it. Not really. Some give allowance to look at it, examine it, go to school about it, and be a student for life <laughs> and never use it. 
You also have to give intent to use it. So let's speak of the first one. Now there's four of these engines and they're a little different than what we've taught in the past. We really haven't taught about this one that much. It's a big one. I'm going to call it the engine of awakening. Awakening to self-awareness of who you are. A very, very big engine. Now you might think that that is common to all. There would be those who are aware of themselves and would always ask a little more about who they were and what they were here for, but you'd be wrong. Even those dear ones in spiritual circles who belong to those organizations which are spiritual don't encourage an awakening. They encourage a following. And you'll sit there and be told who you are. And you'll sit there and be told what creation is all about, your part in it, what you're supposed to do, not to do, and what will happen if you don't behave. That's not your own engine, dear ones. You have pasted another engine onto you, and then that engine is propelling you around. No, this is an allowance for your own engine. Now, there would be those who don't want to engage your own engine. They say, well, I, I, have a, I have one that's good enough. What are you afraid of? Let me ask you, O oh spiritual one, one who says your engine is good enough, as you've been told, are you afraid that your own engine might show something different? What if you fired up that engine of self-awareness and it showed you something far, far grander than anything you've ever been taught. Would that be okay? What if I told you it, it might not fly in the face of what you already know? It just got bigger. It got grander. Wouldn't you like to know the whole story of who you are? This is the best engine the human being has. And here's why. Because it keeps on going. Once that exposure or awakening starts to happen to any human being who fuels that with allowance and the integrity of intent, once it begins, it never stops. Now, you can deny it's there, but you can never unknow what it shows you. Don't you love it? It's that important. Dear ones, it's that important. This engine of awakening, of self-awareness, starts to reveal the mysteries of life. What are you here for? Is there a bigger picture around those who are with you? Is there a plan at hand? What's going on with the planet? All of those things start to be revealed because you're part of it. Those who start awakening and have this engine start to move them forward are amazed at the peace they start to have about all things on the planet. Oh my goodness, there's a plan. Oh, now I understand all of this talk about 2012 or, or, or the procession of the equinox. It's, it's the best news anybody could, could give. This planet is awakening and I'm part of it. Wow. Did that happen to you yet? Are you starting to even begin to ask yourself, 
would I like to know more from my own engine rather than someone else's historical engine? And if that's you, it's easy. It's inside. Dear Spirit, show me what it is I need to know. Dear Spirit, I intend to know the benevolence of me. Is there more here that I should realize? Am I bigger than I was told? What is it I need to know? And if that is you, I guarantee things will start to occur for you. One of the best attributes of this engine is that it, it starts to lead to other engines. Now we're going to talk about those other engines in the channels to come. All those channels will be available to everyone. But let me tell you what happens. This one has to happen first. When you start asking the questions, what is out there? How does it apply to me? Suddenly the answers lead you to other engines you had no idea about. What if I told you one of them is a, is a beautiful energy you didn't even think you had, which is yours to create your future, to create a reality you didn't even think you could create. These are all part of the other engines that are being revealed from the one I'm talking about now. As you sit there, as you listen to this channeling, I want you to feel the truth of what I'm telling you. You are magnificent. Do you have a soul? How many of you think you have a soul? Do you think for a moment that that soul was created dirty? Maybe you were told that. Do you think the creator gave you a dirty soul? One that you had to constantly clean up and work some, some things around it so that you'd be all right? Or do you think that soul might be a piece of something bigger that's magnificence? What if that soul of yours actually was a part of creation. If you had that inkling, you'd be right. That's intuition. That's another engine. What does your intuition tell you about you? Not what you've been told. About your arrival with a beautiful soul on the planet. Hopefully that intuition would say, what's it all about? <laughs> Is it bigger than I was told? Who am I? Is there a plan for me? Why am I here like this? Why do I feel the way I do? That's the awakening soul. That's the engine that you have. First step, yet again, give allowance for it to be. I allow everything around me the angels that supposedly are here to show me this. And then intent. I intend to use it to have a more benevolent life and an understanding of the mysteries that are before me. Dear one, there are no mysteries once you find out Awakening from that coma of darkness once you find out, oh my, I'm beautiful. Oh my, look at what I missed. Look at what I can do. Oh my, I want to take the hand of the angelic realm around me and do something with it. That's who you are. Why don't you find out more and ask is this possible? Awareness 
of things bigger than you were taught is the first engine of the month. I would not give you this information if it were not true. I am in love with humanity, which is starting to awaken in so many ways. Love for one another, concern for the planet, concern for the animals and Gaia. That's an awakening. What about you? And so it is. And following that beautiful message about the engine of awakening, I invite you now to bring your awareness back into your body. And if you've had your eyes closed, I invite you to open your eyes as we move into the next part of the program. And our guest this evening is quite an extraordinary guest that has had many different paths already in his life unfold. And the ever increasing desire to know thyself is what is always pushing this young gentleman to keep breaking new ground. And his name is Kyle Cease. And I want to make sure he's on the Zoom feed with us. Kyle, are you there? I am here. I'm so happy to be connecting with you. Thank you. I am right here. Can you hear me? Yes, we can definitely hear you. We and can hear you. And we're exceptionally excited that you're there. I am. I'm, I'm yeah, so, Lee's been telling me yeah. so much how he's been looking forward to this part of the evening. Yeah, if I'm jumping All up and day. down in my chair, I don't know if anybody <laughs> can see him. So I want to get on with making sure that, uh, that we, we hear from him. Kyle Cease, New York Times bestselling author, has a gift of merging comedy with personal transformation. As a comedian, Kyle had two number one Comedy Central specials and was voted as number one ranking on Comedy Central stand-up showdown. That's a biggie, folks. After leaving his job as an award-winning comedian, and he was, Kyle dedicated his life to helping others and created something called Evolving Out Loud, which is a growing community with over 400,000 members worldwide. Kyle has personally coached over 15,000 people, and his YouTube videos have been watched, are you ready, over 60 million times. So I think it's great evidence, everyone, that the shift of consciousness is truly here and there is an awakening happening all over the planet. And Kyle is a big part of that awakening. He has made over 100 TV and movie appearances, including Jimmy Kimmel Live and The Late Late Show. He has done many speaking events regularly, and every time he comes out to speak, he fills large venues all across the United States, and he's been a guest speaker at thousands of colleges, summits, and Fortune 500 conferences. So Kyle, he says, continuously inspired by his daughter, he would say he is ever evolving out loud and on a journey to constantly find out the truth of who he is. But my favorite quote from him is this one, quote, you are no temporary story. You are the now, unquote. Kyle, mm -hmm. welcome to the program. I, first of all, I, I'm realizing as you guys give this beautiful intro that <clears throat> you should follow me around and give this intro everywhere I go. I think <laughs> every time I'm going into a restaurant, you guys should show up and be like, let me tell you about who you're about to serve here. Yeah, right. <laughs> 400,000 members worldwide yeah. to Comedy Central. Like I just, I'm wanting to hear what I have to say after what you just said. I'm, I'm so touched. And I have to tell you, you saying you're excited to, to see me is uh, ironic because you are absolutely one of the people who embodied the permission for me to let go of something that was fantastic for the miraculous and you know your channeling and your work um absolutely has helped me so much to find this higher me so i want you to know i couldn't do it without you too so it's just a reflection of you also and my other heroes and you're absolutely one of them so to be with you is a total honor today thank you oh we can just sit here and talk about each other i'm mean, <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, Kyle, the, the big question everybody wants to know is, I'll just say, how did this happen to you? You know, one thing I think that 
is an old pattern that a lot of us still have in our body and is a way that we used to live in the past a lot is the illusion of when something happens, I'll be happy. And I got really lucky because I got to experience a lot of the things that I wanted to have happen. And I know that sometimes when you finally get to experience something that you want, you learn it's not necessarily the only answer to life. I had thought when I finally got this movie role, I'll be happy. When I you know, get to date this person, when I make this income, when I have this Comedy Central special, I'll be happy. And I watched a lot of the people in the field that I was in also achieve a lot of the things. And a lot of times they became sadder. They became more aware that this thing is the thing that makes me happy, so I better not lose it. It better not leave me. I better not fall apart. And I realized this pattern of when something happens, I'll be happy is something that we all have sitting in our body. I bet every listener right now can think of something in their body that when I finally get over that, uh, uh, whatever addiction, when I finally get over what that person thinks of me, whatever it is, I'll be happy. And really, when you finally achieve that, that pattern still exists. So it needs to find a new thing that will make you happy and really say that the now isn't enough. And my shift went from when something happens, I'll be happy to more and more while still some of the old patterns still exist when I'm happy, things will happen. And by happy, I mean, okay with every aspect of myself. Can I be present with the pain, the shame, the fears, the, the joy, everything that's here? And the more I started actually getting connected to myself and being excited about just seeing what's here and letting go of what the circumstances are more and more, I noticed that my bliss had nothing to do with the circumstances, yet it moved me to a higher and higher alignment of appreciation with my myself, which actually ironically made space for the circumstances to change around me. So at one point when I started going inward big time in 2010, um, I started really investigating the energies in my body that weren't true, that were conditioned, that were patterns that I learned from my parents or, you know, their parents. And I think that a lot of times we learn these things from our parents, but we really don't understand we're learning from our parents' egos and old programs. And then we think we are that, but we're just kind of a bunch of patterns of, you know, unconscious parenting that they didn't necessarily do the inner work that we get to do. And then you become identified as that. And the real truth in my eyes is that you're God's kid. You're the now's kid. And the now is a very expansive, loving energy. It doesn't move based on shame. It doesn't move based on fear. And the more I started really looking at the truth of what I am, the more the circumstances mirrored that. And one of the things the circumstances asked me to do was to continue to follow my heart, even if I have to leave stand-up comedy. And at one point, I finally did. It just said, I have hire for you. And I didn't know what it was. And I went through a phase of crying out the identity of I am a stand-up comic or I am a movie actor or different things like that. But then there was this higher frequency that was like, just stay with me, just continually, just, just stay there. And I would watch as my cells would release old stories and different things. And then they would always be replaced by more miracles, more magic. And at one point, I was filling bigger theaters than when I was a stand-up comic, and I started merging comedy and transformation and really connecting to a truth that could speak through me better and better. And I was kind of <laughs> started being called what would happen if Eckhart Tolle and Jim Carrey had a baby. And, <laughs> and I got to... <laughs> I got to kind of access this me that was more about what's unfolding here. And then the circumstances mirrored that and the theaters actually got bigger. And I did what Bob Proctor said, find the truest you and be not replaceable. You know, I think that all of us have this ability to access the truest self. When you do that, you're not replaceable. And then you become worth more and you become more valuable and you become more the God you, the true you, the infinite you. And so the circumstances became miraculous miraculous as I worked more and more on letting go of my attachment to the circumstances. And they just mirrored my connection to myself. So there's always still more work here. And my real goal, my highest truth, my, my number one intention 
is to know what I truly am. It's not to shift a bunch of people. That can be a byproduct of knowing what I truly am. But if my goal is how many people can I shift, I'll always be like, I have to help more people. I have to, I'll always feel not there. But if I'm going, I'm just, everything in my life is moving me more towards the truth of what I am. If it's something negative that's happening, it's helping me see a pattern that's not the truth of what I am that needs to be released. And if it's something positive that's happening, that's a mirror of the inner work and the progress that I'm making. Making. So my number one intention is to know what I truly am. And then the byproduct, I believe, is that it can impact way more people, not only based on what I'm saying, but the frequency that I'm just emitting as a human being. So that's my goal is a byproduct of a world shift based on the byproduct of the clarity of what's going on inside of me. And and it's and it happens to be filling bigger theaters and making New York Times bestseller and all these other things that I more and more am proud of, but losing attachment to and more and more fascinated with the unfolding of what I am. And part of that comes with having a six-year-old daughter that is expanding me so much and helping me become really present and grateful, honestly, all the time, because I just have this really special, amazing, beautiful, magical little girl that makes me just so humbled and helps me to find a love that's beyond what I could find alone. So, so that's where beautiful. I am so far. So beautiful. And I love that you mentioned that you still incorporate aspects of yourself. And I think this is important when we talk about identity and how we get so attached to our identity. Sometimes when we come on a spiritual path, we almost want to delete everything that we were before, but yes. it's about incorporating Yes. everything that we are. So, you know, Lee, before he channeled, was an audio engineer and he brings that element yes. to his work. You, with your comedy, you bring that element to your work. And now I, I think it's so beautiful. I hear you saying you bring the element of being a parent to this beautiful mm. six-year-old and it actually expands your work rather than contracts yes. it. So how, what would you say to other people who may be in that situation where they've had an awakening and they want to be on that new path but find it difficult to let go of what they're doing? Yeah, well, I think that the belief is that it's only one or the other. And, you know, I went through that for a while, too. When I first shifted out of stand-up comedy, I, I started going to Agape and getting to work with Michael Beckwith and different amazing speakers and was like, I, I went through probably a year of I'm no longer a comedian. I'm now a spiritual speaker. And then later I realized... I don't have to be identified as a stand-up comedian, but I have a tool belt of 20 years of being a stand-up comic. And maybe I could use that to remember where people are and bring a different element of my true self into it. So, and I even do that with parenting. I think it's not true to say I am a parent because there was one time that I wasn't. It's just, that's another tool that I can bring. And that tool is something that helps me, um, be humbled, be, you know, find a new sense of purpose. And I'm sure not saying that has to be everyone's journey, but it's amazing how many things we say I am and then fill it with something. But if that's who you are, as Wayne Dyer would say, then if that goes away, you go away. And a lot of people think I am the relationship. I am the career. I am that money. And one of the things I believe that's happening in this time right now is the fall apart of everything you're not that you think you were. And you're seeing the world kind of go into chaos right now because a lot of people were identified as I am this career, this story, this family unit, you know, whatever. And they're under the illusion that that's what you were. But my offer is that's what you weren't. And you're actually moving more and more towards what you are. So a lot of people say, I don't know what I would be without that friendship or I don't know what I would be without, you know, this identity. And I'm like, actually, you never knew what you were. You were wearing a padded suit and you thought that was you. And it gave you a sense of certainty that was false. And what's going on in this time to me is actually a really great thing. People are falling apart in the false selves and moving into the truth of what they are. And if you understand that's what's going on, this time is amazing. If you believe that you are the old story, this time is really dark. People have really dark feelings 
feelings and depressed feelings and off feelings. And I, I always am offering people, it's never you that feels the darkness or that's suicidal. It's a pattern that wants to die. And the more you get present for it, the more that it can. And when it does, you don't, you become more of what you are. And when it dies, it's replaced by more and more light, more and more magic. And in my heart, that's what we're here to do is to find that truth of what we are. Uh, and, you know, we've had a lot of structures in the past that we thought we were, but that's obviously not the case. It doesn't make any sense. And um, that's what we're moving towards. So does that make sense at all? Yes. Is, Rick, I want, tell me about the now. You are concentrated on discussing the now. I know you do it all the time. What is what is that? Well, I don't believe that the past exists. I, I, I mean, I can't go visit me when I was 14 years old, right? I can think about it, but really that's just an argument with the now, right? It's me leaving the now, but I can't really leave it. So it's just me resisting the now with a fantasy of somewhere else. And we do this not only with the past, but the future. We say, when I get there, I'll be happy. Usually your fantasy about the future, I believe, is actually your escape from a trauma that's in the now. So to give you an example, if you're like, what do I do to start my business? A lot of times I'm working with people that are like, I got to get this thing going. And I go, if you don't, what happens? You almost immediately find a pattern that's in their childhood. If I don't, then I'm a failure. And if you keep investigating that, and my dad said, if I'm a failure, he'll yell at me or hit me or shame me or walk out on me, whatever it is. And one of the things that started unfolding for me in my teaching and working with people in the last few years is the allowing of the dark energy too, meaning like letting them become present for the pattern that says I'm scared to be unworthy or not enough or a failure or lost or confused and become present for it and tell the pattern, you're allowed to be a failure in my body. By doing that, you're saying I'm unconditional love for you right now, even if you are a failure, even if you're not enough, even if you're unworthy, because all those patterns are not the truth. They're just what you learned in your childhood. So a lot of our escape to the future or our dwelling on the past is actually a pattern you created to not feel pain that's in your body. And if you could allow yourself to just become present in the next now for the pain that's in your body, it'll be alchemized and then it'll leave. So in, I believe there's a lot of in the old self-help world, there's a lot of think positive, but it's almost to avoid what's just you perceive as the negative. And what's trying to birth now, I believe in 2020 and beyond, is the love for also the things you perceive as the negative patterns too. So instead of just being like, you know, if you were bullied in high school and now you're starting a business to prove them wrong, why don't we actually alchemize and become present for the you that felt bullied versus build a company or fix something out of something that's not the truth? And, and then it's built on stilts. It's not something that's the real thing. Our goal is to become present and feel love also for the illusion of unworthiness, the illusion of not enough, the illusion of you can't find your purpose. That, that to me is the next level. And so instead of only escaping to the future and, and coming up with how good it's going to be, you can also come, that's great. That's a, that's a needed thing, but combine that with also, I love you even if you're not enough. And one of the things I've noticed is that your success in one area now is actually directly tied to how much love you can feel for the opposite. So in other words, if you want to be really rich, can you be in love with being broke, right? Because if you have a pattern of, I want to be rich out of a fear of being broke, that fear is still there. So it's, it's still what you're looking at. And so you're going to still unconsciously aim for it. If you want to have a good relationship, can it be tied to how in love you are with feeling totally alone? If you want an amazing life, it's how much you can embrace that death is a part of life, right? The, the people that don't want to look at death are the ones that have 10 locks on their doors and are trying to live as long as possible, but there's no joy in it. And, and so it's still fear. So instead of it being only think positive and ignore this other aspect, this aspect's here. And so I feel an absolute love the most I can, and there's still more and more coming up for the part of me that felt shamed or yelled at or hit or abandoned and let that 
child know that he's loved no matter what. And usually it, it comes with a, every other day, a little bit of a tearing up. And then that little boy is seen and leaves. And then there's more of what I truly am birthed. And that me is more powerful and is capable of achieving much more based on the frequency that I am versus me staying on the fear-based frequency and trying to push and do without actually looking at these true aspects of myself. I would love to hear more about fear because you've you've said it a few times yeah. now yeah. and in our world right now we also have an agenda from um, some social media and other places to constantly throw fear at yes. us. So yeah. can you talk to us about the subject fear? This is ironic, but I think it's a good thing in a way, because I think the more they do it, the more people have to go inward and go, this is crazy. It's just at every angle now. <laughs> it's coming through the media, it's through social media. And what I think is happening right now is everything that's dark in us is trying to come to light. But also we start to see everything that's dark in the world is coming to light. You start to kind of question who the media is or who our government truly is or what's going on, and they're not able to contain it anymore. In other words, all of the darkness is coming to light. That's how it works. So if it's seen, it kind of gets alchemized and darkness can't work with anything other than secrecy and a long timeline to plan dark agendas. But if you decide you're going to hurt someone in a year from now and they find out about it on the way, you're not your plan is foiled. And at the same level, the, the person is freed because they learned that thing that's dark. So we are freeing ourselves right now. And a lot of people don't know that this is a horrifying time to a lot of people. But the, the, the more that stuff is coming up, the more it's seen. It's like the bad guy at the end of every movie. The, the, the more caught they are, the louder they get for a minute, but the more control they lose. Right. Like they're like caught, but their mask is off and they're like, seize him. And then their assistants don't do anything. It's the ego is the same way. The ego is seen. And the second it's seen, it's losing its grip on you. And so we're we're losing our fear, even though it's way louder right now. And, you know, it needs to be chaotic for us to let go of it. And right now, fear is so hard to hold on to because it's so loud and it's so crazy that if we understand the truth of what you are as the now, it's like you're on the operating table and God is pulling the lies out of your body. And the fear is the lie. But you, the only way out is through. So your presence and understanding that you're the now, not that you're the character that's being pulled apart, that, then you're free, right? So our job is to bring in a lot of listening to silence, a lot of meditation, a lot of following the truest you, a lot of letting go of the old structures. And when you do, you're going to be shocked at how much more painless this can be because you're voluntarily joining and co-creating with the universe in the release of the lies of your body. And the lies are what the fear is. The lies are the fear saying, I am this old structure. Like if you have a family member that's not talking to you, you know, or something like that, that's to show you, oh, you thought you were just the family dynamic versus an infinite magical being. So right now they're not talking to you to get you connected to the truth of what you are. And that makes this participation really easy if you understand I'm right on track right now. And the more people do that, the more I perceive it as like they're moving into their butterflyness and letting go of the caterpillar energy of their old story. And a lot of people are in their cocoon. A lot of people are in their caterpillar negotiating with the cocoon. A lot of people are in their butterfly holding on to the caterpillar energy. And then there are some people that are now choosing to fly. And... Um, our job is to fly and let the things that are caterpillar energy go through their things so that they can go into the cocoon. And, uh, and fear is the, is the identity of a false self. And uh, it's, it's an exciting time because it's so loud that it's ready to collapse. And I believe we're moving into something miraculous, what I know you guys would know of as the 5D world. And the 5D world is you finally in the truth of what you are. And you're going to learn that not only is it freer, it's also kind of miraculous and synchronistic and psychic and magic and healing and 
insane. It's a world we don't know exists, but more and more as we choose it, we're moving towards it. You're going to start seeing synchronicities and freedom and elevation and not an attachment to what the rest of the world is thinking and the release of having to pick up everyone else's issues and understanding almost every issue going on in the world is not yours. It is at a level to alchemize, but you're just being elevated right now and you don't have to pick up so much. Just let it keep going. We're seeing a lot of people who are afraid of that very thing. They're afraid of the freedom <laughs> because the cocoon is comfortable, but it's becoming less comfortable, as you said. Uh, what is Evolving Out Loud? Evolving Out Loud is what I'm doing. Uh, my events are called Evolving Out Loud. What Everything I'm doing is under the, the hat of Evolving Out Loud. And the premise of it is I want people to know as a speaker that I'm also a person and have my own issues and vulnerabilities and fears and make mistakes. And Evolving Out Loud comes from the fact that, you know, to me, I don't know if you've ever had it where you've given someone advice, but then you learn from the advice that you gave. Right. That, have you ever given someone else advice? And then you like sometimes you give people advice. They're not even asking like they'll go. I have a stomach ache. And then you're like, I think you should break up with her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How did you know this? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Advice that I'm passionately giving is for me. And I realize how could there be a me that gives an advice and then a me that learns from it? So evolving out loud is interesting because a lot of times speakers give advice based on what they learned. I'm giving advice based on what I'm learning. And, and when I'm done with a talk, I hear what I said and do what I can to apply what I just heard because it was my highest self really only coaching me, but I happen to do it through an audience. But it's so cutting edge for me to hear that I'm inspired by it after or during versus is here's a thing I learned in the past. So evolving out loud comes from the fact that the branding is the idea that I'm always evolving and you get to see me in my hard times. You get to see me in my fall apart. You get to see me in my fears. You get to see me in my doubt. You get to see me in my humanness too. Because I think that one thing we do is we put people on pedestals, which means we take ourselves off the pedestals. And I really love bringing in the idea that, hey, I'm a person that makes massive mistakes and gets lost, but then I alchemize and learn from them. And I, I think that one thing that's made people think that they're separate is the idea that all of the speakers in the world and all the people that are actors and musicians are flawless. And I need to have room to make mistakes and be lost too. And if you're on this planet, you're still at the school of learning. And I'm, I'm passionate about letting the audience know we're all people that are growing so that you don't trick yourself into be thinking someone else has the answer and you don't. So evolving out loud is kind of a combination of me learning from myself, me bringing my humility in, and also at the same time reminding you that I'm just hearing what's here and you have this too. Every one of us has this higher self and um, that we're all people and we're all humans and we have room for mistakes. Um I remember one time, a long time ago, I was on a date with a woman and I was feeling off and she told me, I need you to go back to the teacher. And she only felt safe with me as the speaker. And I was like, hey, if you want to date me, I need to be able to be lost. I need to be able to have a hard time because part of what you're seeing is the culmination of all of my lost moments and then my revelations on the other side. Because I'm not just going to be a pedestal speaker. I'm going to be a person. And it's it's in my humanness that the greatness comes. And that's the same for all of us. I'm so glad you shared that with us. And everything you have shared, people sometimes we get fear of I can't handle it or fear that I won't be able to cope. So we project these scenarios and we have fear. We can't handle it. We can't hope. But everything you have said when you get present in the now moment, there is nothing that can come at you where you you can handle it, you can cope, you can move through it because you alchemize it. So I love that that's what you've shared. So if people want to know more, I want to just let people know they can go to Kyle's website. It is kylecease.com. And of course, lots of YouTube clips as well. So exciting, all of these times ahead. Is there any final words that you want to share with us before we go to a break? I'll make a final word off of what you just said, which is really big, which is that when you start to realize you're the now, 
there's no circumstance that's bigger than what you are. So when you think you're your past, you might think you're the traumatic childhood or the story of what someone did to you or your big mistake from the past that you feel a bunch of guilt about. But when you understand the truth of what you are, you realize there's nothing, I don't care what you went through. I mean, I care on an empathetic level, but you're bigger than that. And when you think you are the story of your past, you get intertwined and caught in it. But to just to double up on what you said, there is no circumstance that's bigger than what you are. And when you start to get into the now, you start to realize that's what I am, this infinite space around me. I'm not even the body. I'm not the story. I'm not the history. I'm not the problem. I'm not the mistakes I made. I'm the now. And the more I'm the now, I'm present for the illusion of the mistakes that I made that were actually purpose to get me uh, perfect to get me here. I'm The more I am what happened to me in a, in a level of I can alchemize it and see it and love it. So take in the idea, if there's any last words I can offer, that there's nothing bigger than what you are. But our job is to listen to silence long enough to merge into what we are and stop thinking that you're the temporary, that you're the passing clouds. You're the sky, the infinite the permanent. You were here before you were born and after you die. You're infinite. And when you start to really work on meeting that and, and realizing that, you'll be shocked at how quickly patterns can dissolve. You're just love. And, and it's up to us to realize that now and stop playing this small game of, of separate self because it's not the truth. Mm, so beautifully wow. said. Thank, thank you, you thank so you. much. Thank you. <sighs> love you guys. Mm. Well, we are now going to take a 10 minute break. Go and have a look at Kyle's website. Go and have a look at his YouTube channels. And then we'll see you back here for the Circle of 12.
Hey, welcome back, everybody. Did, was that fun or what? Absolutely. Um, I love Kyle. We are so happy and lucky to have him on this show. Um, when I saw his name, I went, you're kidding. We get Kyle Cease. Um, I it remember, doesn't get much better than that, No, right? I remember Comedy <laughs> Central and all these things, and I went, whoa. And so thank you, Kyle. Yeah, so what a much. great way to start the holiday season yeah. with Kyle whoa. joining us. <laughs> Well, we'd like to do what we now call um, Miracle Moments, and it's about celebrating miracles of others, and it's about connecting and sending love and compassion to those who are asking for a miracle. I want you to know that the energy of compassion and prayer for others is exceptionally powerful. Group prayer works. Group prayer works. And many of our members have told us about the miracles they have received, even because of that. I'd like to ask Monica to share a miracle moment which happened to one of our Circle of Twelve members. I would love to, and I love this part of the program. This is where you get to shine. You are beautiful community and Circle of Twelve members. This miracle comes from Mark, and Mark says, a month ago, I started having crippling headaches. So I went to the emergency room. Now, I think that's pretty serious when you get to that point. Mark continues and says that they did a CAT scan and told me I had a major brain bleed the size of a baseball along with swelling, which actually made it the size of a, a softball due to the fact that I have high blood pressure and I'm taking blood thinner medication for my mechanical aorta valve in my heart. I was flown to another hospital. I was put in intensive care for about five days and they released me two weeks ago under duress. I've been a Healing Wednesday member for about a year and I've been following Cryon for three years. Along with Monica Lee Cryon and my dear friend Shauna L. Francis, I knew I would be fine. As of yesterday, my neurosurgeon showed me both last month's CT scan and yesterday's. The spot in my brain is now smaller than a marble. I feel great. Thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone in the circle of 12. I love you all. Love, light and gratitude. What a heart-feeling, uplifting, amazing story from Mark. And that shows you, doesn't it, how things can happen, things can change for you no matter what your situation. Mark just told us about this uh, brain bleed in his head and it was bigger than a baseball. Now it's smaller than a marble and miracles can happen. And so let's use this energy, this beautiful energy of what is possible, of how miracles can happen and harness it all together as a group of powerful old souls, that's you. You wouldn't be watching this unless you were an old soul. And as an old soul, you have beautiful engine that is inside of you. So let's put our engines to work. I invite you to close your eyes and just Feel into the area of your heart, your beautiful, magnificent heart energy that is capable of so much love, so much compassion, kindness, sensitivity, communication, patience, tolerance, benevolence. There is so much capacity within your heart area. And as we continue focusing on the heart area, we become entrained with one another. There is a synchronization, a coherence between all of us. And all things are possible 
from this place where the heart resides, where unconditional love can flow through our hearts and reach others. And so let's send the energy of all things are possible to those who are requesting our help in this moment. May they receive a wave of love from us where an energy comes. All things are possible no matter what circumstance you are in right now. All things are possible. Will you allow the acceptance that all things are possible? And let us now send this wave of energy around the planet, encompassing every human that shares the breath of life with us right now. All things are possible. And you too are included. You are reminded for your own life, all things are possible. And with this energy of all things are possible, let us now invite Cryon and the Circle of Twelve. Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon. Come a little closer. That is the invitation and has been since the beginning of this series of programs called the Circle of Twelve. The Circle of Twelve, it's a metaphor for encompassing yourself into the structure of the universe, which is base twelve. You might say the Circle of Twelve is you. It's God, if you want to call it that. It's spirit. It's all that is. And in that structure, you are included. And what makes this concept different from another meditation is that absolutely special concept that you sit in the middle of all that is, that is sacred, that is of creation, and not apart from it. The teaching on this planet is that you are apart from God. The majority of teaching has you separated from the Creator. And I am here to tell you, and have been for 33 years, that you are included, included in the most divine things that you have ever seen on the planet or know about on the planet. At the heart of every miracle stands the soul of a human being. At the heart of, of every solution stands the soul of the human being. All things, dear ones, are possible because of this. We celebrate the miracles in those lives on this program. And time after time, we hear about the impossible becoming possible. Time after time, we, we hear about that which is seemingly, if not actually, <laughs> unusual and impossible. In other words, we see it all. And this is the teaching, and it's the teaching of this day. Not much happens without asking. Dear ones, you are created on this planet as a human being that has free choice to look around, ask questions or not, to be a product of your environment and your culture or not. All of this, a test of free choice. And in this new energy on the planet, that test is being won by those who are discovering light. 
by themselves quite often, younger than ever before quite often. Asking the question, is there more? Why am I here? What am I doing here? In other words, is there a plan? There are so many who have actually died on the operating table and come back with stories you can't hardly believe, unusual. But they know there's something more. There are so many of them that are disappointed they came back at all, angry at the doctor. Why did you bring me back? Because of what they saw. What they saw was their own soul. The beauty of it, the interaction of it, the love of it, the compassion of it. That's where we take you in the circle of 12. The teaching of the day is about the engine of awakening, of self-discovery, of the mystery of you. And like before, we ask you to go across that metaphoric bridge from the known to the unknown, from 3D of everything you've been taught to what you don't have in any book, not really, not yet. The ability for you to cross a bridge to your own soul, look around, be taught by, by those who are there, and come back. You're not going to find that many places. Because this is part of that which you call the shift. The new energy that is here that is starting to feed the questions and the mysteries of humans who are asking, what else is there? Or those who have been in esoterics all their lives and metaphysics who are starting to awaken even to a bigger plane of what they can do. Broader than they ever thought. They are in discovery and awakening as well. Come with me. Let's cross the bridge together. Crossing this bridge should be a delight. It should, should take the weight off of your heart as you walk across the bridge through that, that mist that obfuscates what's on the other side and your soul is revealed. Beautiful, majestic, Whatever you could imagine, the most beautiful thing you could see is there, and your name is on it. Oh. Can you imagine what that would be like? All problems drop from you. All the things you carry around as responsibilities for a moment are not there. And you all know that you're going to have to pick them up again when you return. But there's something that says when you do, they'll be lighter, a lot lighter, because you're here. Imagine this ability is real. The ability for you to visit that which is your divinity right now. Oh, we've been here now for years, dear ones. You've talked to your your past lives and your higher self and all of these things. There's an angel I want you to meet. It's an unusual one. <laughs> A very unusual one. A name you haven't really heard much of before. I want you to go through the door that you have gone through so many times in this visualization and this meditation. And the metaphor of going through the door is that you give intent going into a, a specific area. And there's a chair, huge room, perhaps even larger than you can see. The walls too far away, ceiling too high. And you know that there's going to be someone Something, perhaps, uh, that is beautiful that you will experience. We'll have you meet angels all month long. And the first one, as I say, unusual. <laughs> have you ever heard of Raziel? 
This is the angel of mysteries. I want you to sit in the chair and let this angel come forward. An odd name, perhaps, but it is a representation of an energy of unraveling the mysteries of life. If you could sit in front of a divine angel and ask any question, what would it be? What would it be? Would you ask the angel why you're here? Would you ask the angel the secret of life? What is it that you would ask that angel? Would you do what I have told so many people before to skip all the questions you think you want to ask and instead say to the angel, tell me what it is I need to know. We don't have that much time. <laughs> what is it that you would do? Raziel knows you so well and is smiling and is starting to start vibrating in a very interesting way. Now you have no concept of what it looks like to have an angel vibrate. First of all, you really don't have a concept of an angel. You have only that which is given to you in that which is 3D. Normally, it is a female with some kind of a crown or a halo, white clothing, <laughs> floating, <laughs> shining. That's not what it looks like. Not at all. This angel looks like your best friend because it is. There is a piece and part of your higher self within this angel. You might say this is the angel of awakening. This is the one where in 3D you lay there and you go, what is it? that I'm feeling? Is there more than I was be told? Give me, give me information. When you say, I intend and allow for more information about me. Dear Spirit, tell me more about why I'm here and, and what's going on. This is the angel. It'll show up and say, welcome home, dear ones. Funny you should ask. Uh, oh, old soul, right on schedule in the shift, starting to awaken. That's you. And this is the angel that'll be there for you. But for now, this is the one that sits with you. Eyeball to eyeball. Joyful. in what is going to be transmitted to you today. When the angel looks at you and says, listen carefully, you're not going to believe this. Listen, this is who you are. And out of that angel's countenance comes pictures and visions that'll take your breath away of who you are, where you've been, why you're here, who you came in with, the decisions you've made, what's next in your life if you want it, and all the things that you might have asked. That's who's here. Are you interested yet? Dear ones, this can be as real as you want it to be. Now the facts and the figures and the verbiage and the language and the sentences, and that all goes into you in some way. Or not, perhaps not in 3D as you, as you wanted it to, but it's all in there so that when you come back from this experience, you'll be peaceful. He'll say, I know so much more now of who I am. You might even feel confident enough to look in the mirror and say, I am loved beyond measure. Now I know it. I am magnificent. Now I know it. All things are possible, and now I know it. It will change you. The engine of awakening is starting to chug along in your life, to be fueled with allowance and your awareness and your intent. The 
take you to places that you need to be in this the shift to change this planet with what you know what you're going to do and what you're going to show others congratulations dear light worker yet again dear old soul on self examination i'm crying i'm in love with you all and so it is